Well, hello, friends. Glad you could join us. Welcome to another edition of the Midwest F1 League Division 1. Tonight, we are at the Baku City Street Circuit in Azerbaijan for what should be a fantastic edition of Division 1 action. 19 cars on the grid. And while we have a minute here, let's take you through your starting lineup. Got Palmer qualifies on pole by 13 one thousandths of a second over race date 2016. Championship second and first lined up first and second on the grid tonight. Final Flame, three tenths of a second behind in third. Dusty Lusky, five and a half behind at fourth. Gotney Weeb will start fifth, about seven and a half behind in fifth. Matter of fact, he's out qualified Reimer in sixth by less than two one hundredths of a second. Then it's 1.17 back to uh, GSR Caesar in seventh place. Adub will qualify in eighth. It'll be the Williams of Fire Up Flow ninth. Tenth is Travis Scott. Eleventh, Cake Thomas. Twelfth is Callie Robb. 13th, Shariah Coleslaw. 14th, Chuck Blazin. 15th, and Houdini. Uh, and after that, Edwin, Nikki, 64, Gunnar Addy, and Lancey in that order, none of which able to put together timed attempts. After Miami last time out, it's very clear that Race Day does have a stranglehold on the championship, but... What does that championship look like? Well, let's just have a look here. As we come into round number nine in B Azerbaijan out of 15, race day leads the standings. 488 points to Gott Palmer's 445. Then it's a big gap. It's 100 points between first and third. At Cali Robb at 388 points. Reimer in fourth at 349 after, I believe, not even racing in Miami last week. Kate Thomas in fifth, only four points uh, ahead of Nikki 64 in sixth at 324. Swee in seventh. Sixth and seventh for the Aston Martins. That's a good look. Eight in ninth for the Alpines as well as Shariah Coleslaw eighth at 299 and A-Dub at 277. A-Dub ahead of Fire Up Flow by one sole point at 276. It's Travis Scott above uh, Gottney Weeb by five points. 11th for Travis Scott at 265. Uh, the pair of the uh, Saubers of Final Flame and Houdini one point separating the both of them. 13th and 14th. It's Chuck Blaze in 15th. Edwin and Lancey tied for 16th. Gunner 18th. Caesar 19th. And the Plums uh, rounding out the championship table in 20th place. As far as the constructors are concerned, Red Bull do still lead the charge by some margin as well. 873 to McLaren 699. It's Ferrari's eight, uh, 683 ahead of Aston Martin at 625. 20 points clear of V-Carb in 5th at 605. Williams at 596. It's one point separating the Alpines and the Saubers. 514 to 513. And then 22 separating Mercedes and Haas uh, in the battle for ninth at 382 to 360. So, that brings us here at Azerbaijan. It's a track where, if you remember in the previous games, plural, uh, 23 and 22, you'll remember this track a lot of drivers definitely hated. Why? Because it's a street circuit, and it's got about as much traction as an ice rink in the middle of winter. So, uh, this one, hopefully, this game has kind of given our drivers a little bit better of a surface to race on. Palmer will definitely be looking to have the edge into the first corner. Uh, it looks as if all but Five of our competitors tonight have gone have gone to the medium tire. Got any weeb fire up flow, Travis Scott, Gunner, and Lancey, uh, the five of which who have gone hard for this occasion. This track, one of the quickest on calendar, as well as one of the most treacherous, sector one and two. Uh, well, the really sector one, very straightforward, two uh, 90 degree left handed corners, actually three when you think about it, turns one, two, and three. All left handers, all very quick and very tight as well. Turn four, the right-hander, which they've just gone through now, in towards now, five, six, and seven. It's a very difficult stretch, uh, stretch of corners, this, especially this seventh corner right here. You wanna break a lot earlier than you initially think and take about as much of the curb on the inside as you possibly can, very little runoff, especially coming into the castle section now. Ask Charles Leclerc about that section of the track. He'll tell you, quite frankly, uh, how that is. Going through 13, 14, and 15, we're not going to really see a lot of overtakes made through this section of the track. Of course, it's very high speed, but with how the cars push to the outside, you wouldn't really want to risk going side by side with somebody at that part of the track. Uh, well, it, it, you, you may even have Marcus Erickson hit you by any chance. Exiting turn 16 and down the hill. That 16th corner may be, I'm sorry, that's 15 at that point. This is 16 here. That 15th corner will be uh, treacherous tonight, and I expect, I expect to see some front wings be lost. 16 through 17 now that little slight kink there which you've just seen into the left and right of 18 and 19 it's a very difficult transition to make this especially on older tires as your car will naturally want to push to the outside and force you to the barriers through turn 20 well you don't even know where it was because it's hardly a turn but there it was and then down this very long pit straight here 
DRS will come into play big time. And it's an interesting track, this, because it forces our drivers to really think about what they want out of their car. Do they want straight line speed uh, and then risk having sector two and towards the, uh, the the beginning of sector three, you know, kind of be caught out in that department based on how high downforce it needs to be through that sector? Or do they do it the other way around? Do they put on the downforce, have that car be comfortable through the difficult parts of this track, and then sacrifice their speed uh, down the pit straight and anywhere else with DRS? It's a very interesting situation that these drivers have to tackle tonight. And now we're just waiting for Lancey. Uh, sorry, Lancey and Gunner to join the grid here. 19 of the Midwest's finest on the grid. As we line up here, the lights beginning to turn on. We've got two, three, four, and eventually five for the ninth time in Division One this season. And we're away. And I think Palmer may have, well, both of them have actually quite spun the tires getting off the line there. I think Palmer will clear race day into the first corner. Final Flame trying it around the outside. Can't get it. Hits the wall as well as that of Caesar. Caesar's hit the wall as well. And I believe maybe is their wing damage being had as they go two by two. It looks like a NASCAR race into this corner as they all try to file in there and hope that nobody uh, finds a barrier on the outside. Side by side by side by side. They go down the stretch heading into turn number three as Palmer leads race day by half a second. Final Flame and Reimer, look at the respectful and great racing we see here between these two side by side, still now going through turn four. A little bit of contact there, but that's natural with how close this racing is through this sector, section of the track. Heading into sector two now, I'm hoping that this gets sorted. Oh, Reimer has a little bit of a slide there. Looks as if he's caught it back. He will lose the spot to Final Flame, but that could have been much worse. And what is worse is that of Caesar, who's losing positions left, right, and center now, who I believe is, uh, well, it doesn't appear to have wing damage, but he's definitely not on the pace of what the uh, the, uh, kind of the status quo is here. Matter of fact, Caesar down three positions off the start. He and Chuck Blazin have lost the most so far as they make their way through Sector 2 and heading in towards Sector 3 now. Palmer leads race day by half a second, who leads Dusty Lusky in the Aston Martin by about 1.2. Final Flame in fourth, 1.2. Reimer, uh, seven, eight tenths of a second. Gottney Weed there as well. A-Dub and Kelly Robb rounding at the top eight, not to mention Ke uh, Kate Thomas and Caesar also in position. Uh, DRS will be activated this time by, and they'll have it on the way into turn three. The detection point uh, beginning turn number two on the way into the corner so as long as you are within a second of the car ahead when they get to that section of the track you will have drs that won't be the case for dusty lusky unless he makes up a lot of time going through turn one he currently sits 1.3 behind and he's going to be under a hell of a lot of pressure from final flame by the time they do get to uh turn number three we do have uh, a bit of a move happening here cali rob uh, getting around Gottney Weave. I think Weave may have made a mistake somewhere along the line. I think he's lost at least two positions there. But down the straight they go. Race day now trying it. Will he have a look to the inside of Palmer? No, not quite. Final Flame has a little bit of a peek to the inside of Dusty. Not going to happen either. A-Dub. Does he look at Reimer? Not quite. You're really not going to see too many moves made into turn three. It's a very tight corner. Not a lot of runoff on the outside either. You don't want to go down the escape road. Mostly because, oh, as GSR Caesar almost forced into the wall there by fire up flow. They tried going side by side through Turn number four didn't quite work. And they're side by side still. We'll catch up with them in a minute. Final flame within a tenth and a half of Dusty Lusky. He's going to try the right side. He'll have to back off before they get to the castle, uh, which he does. Thankfully, that would have been scary if he didn't. As they file their way up through the castle section, Palmer still has the lead of this Grand Prix by four tenths of a second over race day. I think the goal for race day now is to stay within DRS range of the car ahead and not make any mistakes. Final flame within a couple of tenths of Dusty Lusky. That might be a move being made here shortly. What I was about to say is you're not really going to see many moves made into turn three because if you, you know, it's very tight exiting turn three and then immediately having to switch to the opposite side and then go through turn four. Not to mention if you go to the escape road, you're going to lose a hell of a lot of time. DRS activated. Final flame to the right side on Dusty Lusky. They're going to be side by side. It's a total drag race down the pit straight. And there they go. It appears 327 kilometers an hour and counting for Final Flame only about 310 for Dusty Lusky. And that's why DRS is so important. Cali Rob getting around Reimer. Reimer's going to try to outbreak him on the outside. Will he be able to stay there and keep the spot? The side by side still. Reimer at this point will at least have DRS to Cali Rob. Cali might go deep into the corner. No, he's actually held that quite well. I thought he was on trajectory to kind of go into the outside wall. That wasn't the case. He's held it very nicely. Three tenths of a second still. Race day still trying to close in on Palmer. Hasn't really had the chance yet to overtake. But at the same time, uh, a 26 lap Grand Prix here. And, uh, you know, lap times in the one, uh, what are we at for, for times? 130s? 
I mean, lap times in the 140s right now, they're not really something we're going to see many, uh, you know, immediate overtakes be making. But we do have Gunner, at, uh, Gunner off at the back. Looks as if he's lost a bit of front wing there. Yes, he has quite a lot on the left side as well. Expect to see a lot of front wings be replaced today. 26 lap of the uh, Baku City Street Circuit. It's a simultaneously quick but also slow race when you think about it. Minute 42 lap times, but only 26 of them to be able to have. With no safety car or virtual safety car involved, this race might be a breeze. But when has there never been a safety car in Baku? Riddle me that. Exiting turn 16 now. Kelly Robb behind by about a quarter of a second over A-Dub. A-Dub at a two and a half second disadvantage to the back end of Dusty Lusky. The question is going to be race day. Will he have enough to be able to get around Palmer heading into the first corner? I don't really believe he will. He's using DRS but not his battery. Side by side, wheel to wheel between Callie, Rob, and Adub as they go down the pit straight. Reimer looking in behind. Reimer going to be probably looking to get both of them. He'll try the outside. Three wide. And Reimer, will he be able to be later on the brakes and get round his two opponents? It appears that he will. Yes. Shades of Daniel Ricardo there down the pit straight in a Red Bull, no less, into the first corner. Reimer now back up to fifth. Fire up flow, getting overtaken by Travis Scott. Kelly Robb seems to have gotten back round Reimer uh, with the aid of DRS making their way uh, down in towards turn three. So Reimer now back to sixth. It appears that final flame has gotten back within six tenths of a second of the battle for the lead as Palmer uh, still leads race day by six tenths of a second. But final flame, I think, might be pushing here because uh, he's definitely getting closer to race day. Remember, not too long ago, that was about a 1.2 second advantage for race day. Not the case anymore. The two Mercedes swapping positions on the way into turn seven. The Williams, oh, I think the Williams of fire flow may have gotten into the back end of Caesar, which made him get into the back end of Edwin. Bit of a uh, accordion effect going on there. Thankfully, no uh, wild result out of that one. Thankfully enough. That sort of thing will happen as well, where you just kind of get stacked up into the braking zone. It does happen. It just takes one man missing their braking zone. And then suddenly we've got a ripple effect. Through turns 18 and 19, Palmer still leads race day by four tenths of a second. I think race day might be coming fast this time. Pause. Let's see what he does. Maybe will he try the outside? No, and I, I, it has to be said, race day being very cautious for the time being. I think race day, as long as he's ahead of Final Flame by a good enough margin, he's not too concerned with taking Palmer right now. I think he realizes it's going to be a lot like, uh, you know, kind of Las Vegas and Miami for that respect. I mean, we had Miami last time out. It's going to be one of those scenarios where it's like, if you do get ahead of somebody with DRS, you'll probably get overtaken again the next time by. So, you know, might as well tuck in line, maybe save some fuel. Maybe not the case this time for race day. On the way into turn three, chooses the inside. Will he try to stay ahead and outbreak round the outside of turn four? It's a bit of a risky one. Race day does make it happen, though. Round the outside of turn four, and we have a new leader, the championship leader of race day. Final Flame in position as well, and he's gotten around the McLaren too. Well, on their way through, Sector 2 into the castle section now. Race Day does lead Final Flame by six tenths of a second, although it is getting a little bit closer. I think Final Flame might be pushing a lot more. Uh, than either of his two counterparts around him. He was able to put enough of a gap behind Dusty Lusky and, you know, now be able to get round Palmer and maybe pressure race day here going down the pit straight. That's going to be a good look for Final Flame if he's able to do it. Exiting turn 16 and 17. Race day still leads. Only four tenths of a second. Question will be if Final Flame decides to have a go this time or maybe going into turn three. It would absolutely have to be now. Turn three is too narrow of a corner to really make consistent overtakes in. Final Flame to the inside and is going to get the move on the championship leader and is now our third leader of the day. Meanwhile, Palmer has actually fallen off, off of this battle by about eight tenths of a second. He's gone way back. Reimer three tenths of a second to the back end of Cali, Rob for the fifth spot. At the moment, Reimer started sixth. He's currently sixth. GSR Edwin getting around Travis Scott into the first corner, now up to tenth. Travis Scott down one position, Edwin up six seconded on the uh, biggest mover chart of the day, only to Callie Robb, who's up seven. 
At the line this time will be 20 laps to go. That sounds like a lot, but goodness me, we are having a lot of fun here in the early goings. That is absolute for sure. And hey, by the way, let's have a look at the upcoming schedule here in Division 1. We've got a couple of good races on the way in the coming weeks. We've got Singapore next time out, Brazil the week after. Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The uh, Suzuka International Racing Course in Japan for the penultimate round of the season and then Circuit of the Americas to round things out. What a hella killer, that doesn't make any sense, killer back end of the season that we have here. Side by side now, race day trying to poke his head to the inside of Final Flame through Sector 2. Not quite going to get it. Uh, I don't know why we're along with Gunner, I apologize. Oh, well, Final Flame has actually hit the wall there going through turn 18. Uh, I, I wonder if that was just my screen or what. That was slightly visible, that. Thankfully, it doesn't appear he's missing any wing damage. That will slightly hurt his momentum going down the pit straight, but it doesn't appear that Race Day and Palmer are going to be anywhere close enough behind to, uh, to actually look and make an overtake. Maybe will Reimer be able to outbreak Callie Robin in the corner? No, he's not, right, not quite going to be close enough. Norris, Kate Thomas on the back end have gotten it. We do have fire up flow and Caesar side by side as well as Travis Scott looking to the inside of Edwin. It's two by two on the way into the corner and hopefully everything stays okay. Oh, Gottney Weeb uh, gets into the side of the Mercedes there. Oh, sorry, that's fire up flow. Gets into the tire of the Mercedes, a little bit of contact. Uh, does save the car. Track stays green. No front wing damage either apparent for the Williams in question. Caesar tries to poke his head at Travis Scott. Travis Scott actually has a quick look to the inside of Edwin. When I think at least two of the cars there clipping the inside of the barrier going through three. Caesar now having a dive through turn four. Yeah, he's not going to be able to hold on. He won't have the acceleration on the inside like that, but still good effort. But now fire up flow trying to have a move into five. We don't see that too much. And yeah, not going to have it, but still good effort. Fire up flow. Will he have a look at Caesar into seven? That would be something. Yeah, not quite. Three and a half tenths of a second. Chuck plays into the back end of Lancey. By the way, Lancey up four positions. I think Race Day may have had a bit of a slow go through turn 15 then. Final Flame and Palmer behind. Still looking to be in position to potentially overtake. Dusty Lusky now behind by three and a half tenths of a second. He's going to be under pressure from Kelly Robin Reimer here very shortly. Of course, we'll once again look at the tire strategy. All the top seven cars on the mediums. Gottney Weave, the only driver in the top 10 on the hards. After that, Travis Scott, fire up flow in Lancey. As to the inside, final, final flame on race day. And we once again have the Sauber in the lead. Behind, Reimer having a look to the inside of Cali Robb. Now up to fifth. Gottney Weave might be having a look at A-Dub here shortly and does. Actually around the outside of the Alpine. Final Flame leads them down the straight now, heading towards turn three. Doesn't appear that anybody's going to try and make a move now. Although you never know. By the way, really not all that far away from halfway distance here in this Grand Prix. That'll be in a couple of laps time. Final Flame does lead race day by about half a second for the time being. I'm just wondering if Final Flame's going to be able to hold on uh, you know, without the aid of DRS, we're kind of assuming that Race Day is going to be next up to strike. Palmer may be in the mix as well, but Palmer doesn't really look too concerned about attacking the two cars ahead of him. As up through the castle they go. Final Flame still in the lead. Half a second in the gap. Race Day behind by about seven and a half tenths. It does appear that Race Day's car might be a little bit slower. Uh, well, it's 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 interesting to see. We'll, we'll have to wait and see when they get to the high-speed section because it, it really depends on what part of the track they're going through. Race day in some parts looks really quick, and others it looks like he's losing time. And I think really uh, kind of through these high, higher-speed corners, he might be losing more time. Well, no, that, that's actually not true. I think he's staying about the same through there. Down the pit straight they go now. Seven and a half tenths of a second for both race day to final flame and Palmer to race day. Heading towards the first corner. We do have Kate Thomas getting around A-Dub for the eighth position. Nicely done there. A-Dub, I don't believe having DRS. No, Reimer now getting around Dusty Lusky around the outside. Uh, up to fourth. But Dusty trying the inside. Oh, I think Reimer's gone a bit wide there. May have hit the wall coming out of turn two. Sorry, turn one. And now, wow, looks for the time being, he'll be able to stay around Dusty. 
A-Dub actually into the pit lane. Callie Robb now side by side with Dusty Lusky. May get pick up the toe from Reimer. Reimer having to defend kind of both lines here on the way into the corner of the side by side. Callie Robb around Dusty, uh, but I don't think he's going to get the ability to attack Reimer yet for the time being. Got any weeb trying to poke his head on this battle as well. He's not really close enough yet to make it happen, but still. Chuck Blazin getting around Shariah Coleslaw on the way into turn three. And now once again up through the castle section. Final Flame this time only leads by half a second or less. Three tenths to be ex almost exact. <laughs> and now race day looking to the inside. Side by side, wheel to wheel, and oh, in an unorthodox portion of the track, race day retakes the lead. Well, we didn't expect that. We didn't really think that many drivers... Oh, as we have a full safety car on track. Someone's gone round. I think it's uh, one of the Alpines. A-Dub, I think. Or no, who has it been? Is it Houdini? No, I, I don't know why the safety car is out. Is it Gunner? No, this is a really interesting call. I, I don't see why the safety car is out on track. Into the pit lane they go. Race day will lead the queue in. We're assuming to the hard tires for the Red Bull here. Huh. Unless somebody in the midfield has completely lost the front wing. Which we're assuming might be the case for somebody. Who it is though we don't know. I mean, it would have been a hat, had to have been a full front wing gone to have uh, warranted a full course caution like this. Well, Caesar is missing the end plate on the right front side. That doesn't really tell us much. Shariah. No wing change for him. Oh, it's, just, it's the Ferrari of Travis Scott. You only just hardly saw it there, but he was missing a good chunk of the front wing. So as it stands, as we come out of the pit lane, the top seven cars have all taken the hards. Got any weeb to the mediums, Lancey to the mediums, Travis Scott uh, to the mediums as well. Everybody else on the hard tires. Adob made up a couple of positions here considering he pit the lap of four. He's now back up to 10th, which will be a good look for him. Mm. Covered in beer now. Not the point. Anyways, the point being is this. We're coming up to closer to halfway through this Grand Prix. Don't believe the safety car will be in this time. I think it's probably going to be next time by. Uh, especially considering as we wait for Houdini and then Gunner behind to uh, catch up to the queue here. We're at the stage in the race where the safety car will wait for a car to catch up. Unless, of course, it makes the very late decision uh, to come in now, which could be the case. I think the question is really now. I don't think we're too far in. Or, well, how do I put this? I don't think we're at the point where going to hards was... I mean, I don't know. It's a tough question. Because as much as I think it's the absolute idea when you get a safety car like this, it does still seem early in the race, doesn't it? Still, you know, 15 laps to go, albeit we'll probably be at about 13, you know, once we get back to green. I don't know. We're assuming the safety car will be in at the end of this lap. It'll be lap 12 of 26, about halfway through. Majority of the grid on the hard tires now, three of which have gone back to, to medium. Uh, that being Gottney, Weeb, Lancey, and Travis Scott, three of which who I believe started uh, on the, 
hard tires. I think it's a big question here is now will some of these guys at the top end of the grid still be able because I'm thinking a lot of the reason why we saw some of these guys you know kind of get spread out here was the fact that you know once we got off the start you know sometimes there was a couple of holdups maybe that's not going to be the case into turn one now fire flow did decide to stay out uh, he started on the hards it seems 10 laps old as well uh, hard tire so we're assuming yeah he did stay safety car is still not made to call there it is so now the question becomes this as the safety car makes its way into the end of this lap can race day hold on the challenges from behind of final flame and palmer could we see fire up flow get into this battle as well maybe not so much in the battle for the lead but does he hold up those like cali robin reimer and dusty from potentially getting back into the fray here does got any weeb have a good start and maybe challenge amongst the top five and now his medium tires a lot of things to think about here as we're about to get back going fire up flow up five positions cali rob up seven lancy and nikki 64 up six and five respectively and we're about to get back under green. Safety car has made its way back to the pit lane. Race day starts quite late there as Final Flame not been caught sleeping. Into the first corner they go. Final Flame tries it on the inside. Maybe a little contact there. Not enough to send race day round. Matter of fact, the Red Bull will stay ahead as they make their way into turn two. But we have another yellow flag behind as Gunner has gone round and is now missing a little bit of the front wing. We do have Kate Thomas and I believe uh, Caesar battling it up behind as well. But as they snake their way, down towards turn number three. Race day has the lead by about of a quarter of a second. Palmer in third, half a second uh, behind final up, uh, final flame. Fire up flow in battle as well. And by fire up flow has actually really not lost time considering how much older his tires are to those around him. Two tenths of a second for Reimer trying to find the back end of Cali Rob potentially. Again, no DRS this time by. It's going to be pure all out pace uh, until next time by. That's when it's really going to depend on who is quicker than who. For the time being, they're all bunched up and they're all gonna be uh, you know, in close quarters of each other. That's a little bit of a slide there for race day exiting uh, the castle section. Starting to wonder at what point you know, do the tires start to go away. Of course, we're gonna be a halfway distance this time by. Really, the question is, you know, especially for fire up flow, because I think realistically for him, Already 10 lap old hard tires. Do we start to see him, you know, be the baseline into how well those hards work as we got two cars off at the back? I believe both Houdini and Travis Scott may have made uh, a bit of contact with the wall. I'm not quite sure. Definitely appears Travis Scott has. But now Final Flame trying the inside. Down the pit straight they go, heading for the first corner. Final Flame's got some pace, separated by less than two one-hundredths of a second into the first corner. Final Flame's going to look to outbreak. Look at this! Reimer going for three again! He will probably at least get fire up flow and does. I thought he was going to get Kelly Rob too, but Reimer back up to fifth. Exiting turn number two and now down the, uh, the stretch, heading towards turn three. As we have another yellow flag round at the back, somebody's had a bit of an off going out of turn two. I think it was that of Chuck Blazin who looks to be slow. New front wing for Travis Scott. Callie Robb trying to look to the back end of Reimer. Reimer, by the way, now a second and a half down. Fire up flow has lost a couple of positions. A-Dub has now lost two, maybe even three. He's lost its got any weeb to Kate Thomas and now maybe Nikki 64 as well. Lancey trying to poke his head in the battle as well. And I'm just thinking what's gone wrong for A-Dub. Is he uh, potentially missing front wing? I'm not too sure because he suddenly, you know, kind of started to fall a couple of positions there unexpectedly. As they make their way through the castle section once again, Final Flame leads race day by four tenths of a second. It's half a second back to Palmer. Then Reimer, oh, Reimer heavy into the corner. That's surely going to lose him some, some front wing. No? Wow. He absolutely clobbered that wall going out of turn 15. And somehow, 
still has all four wheels on the car and both pieces of front wing attached. Chuck Blazin picks up a three second for multiple warnings. I think maybe as he gone wide coming out of 16. I don't know, that's a bit of a bold place to go off that. Reimer and Callie Robb will now be side by side heading into the first corner. Callie Robb trying it around the outside. Reimer's gonna have to try to outbreak. Still on the left side, still side by side. As they make their way out of one, Callie Robb does clear the Red Bull at least for the time being. That may allow fire up flow into the picture as well, exiting two. Dusty Lusky trying to uh, peek behind as well. Oh, but we got another yellow flag. Chuck Blazin's gone round. Uh, doesn't appear that he's lost too much front wing. Well, he's lost a, a good chunk, but it's not going to be enough to send the course uh, into either a virtual safety car or full. It's a tough break for Chuck Blazin, but the track stays green. Through sector two now. I mean, it's almost a... It's, it's almost like Monaco, but five times as quick, really. I think maybe the question for Palmer is when does he decide to start attacking race day at least? I mean, it's not going to matter who he gets here in second place because they're both going to have DRS uh, to the back end of whoever's in the lead at the time. So I think Palmer really just needs to attack and then maybe... Or, or maybe does that kind of make him the sitting duck and he's got to kind of get more way around uh, that a final flame is. Speaking of getting around, Reimer getting around Cali Robb. Palmer, despite starting on pole, has dropped his way down to third, is being very uh, lackadaisical isn't the right word, but he's being very cautious, not taking too many risks here and not really too interested in pressuring the two cars ahead of him. Kelly Robb now down to the inside of Reimer. Oh, look at Fire Up Flow trying it in the inside. Three abreast, potentially even four if Dusty Lusky joins the fray. Into formation, they go into the corner. Three into one. Will it work? Reimer's going to actually somehow stay ahead of that. And, uh, well, that's testament to the quality of racing in Division 1 because you get three goons out there heading into Turn 1 on any track like that. Three abreast, and that's never going to end well. But... Three very talented drivers, and they've made it happen. Uh, fire up flow in the Williams, I believe, who actually went into the escape road there. He is now losing position. Side by side, Nikki 64 trying it around the outside of fire up flow. We get a yellow flag down the pit straight. I believe somebody's hit a wall somewhere along the line. Nikki 64 getting into it with uh, Lancey behind him. Oh, and the Williams of fire up flow potentially into the side of A dub. Lancey now getting positions both around Nikki 64 and fire up flow. It's a double overtake on the way into turn five. Lots of action here going about in the midfield as now Kate Thomas looking for it in turn seven. Is he going to get it? Yeah, he will. Kate Thomas, what a move. Now that I didn't expect. You don't see very many moves into the front end of sector two like that. Very difficult portion of the track to even drive through, never mind pass through. And Kate Thomas, one of the most veteran drivers on the grid, proving why he's still here. Looking like Kate Thomas and Gran Turismo 7 just then. That was fantastic. Final Flame leading race day down the pit straight. Four and a half tenths of a second. Race day still for the time being not really trying too hard to get around Final Flame. He may get him here even with DRS. Not really using his battery either. He'll flip to the outside on the way into the corner. Race day a bit of a late decision there. Just now going to try to switch to the inside. Yeah, not quite going to have it. Through turn two, no gots either. I'm thinking DRS is really going to have to be the deciding factor here between the two. Although he has saved up quite a bit of battery, and I'm thinking his final flame done the same. Tenth and a half, two tenths of a second on the way into three. Race day's not going to have it, not yet. Got any Weeb and Reimer now side by side. The Williams tries it to the inside. Looks like he's going to get the spot for now. Reimer needs to back off to allow himself some space exiting three. Four tenths of a second there. Lancey to the back end of a dub. Oh, he's going to have a little bit of a go going through turn four. That one didn't look too clean, but he's not hit the wall. I tell you what, what I will say is that these this track looks raceable again in this game, which is fantastic. In 23, man, again, it, it was essentially an ice rink on, on the street circuit. You were having wheel spin in fifth gear. And it was just so not fun for a driver. For a commentator, it was excellent because you didn't know who was going to make a mistake and when. But uh, you, you'd rather have the drivers have good conditions to see, you know, genuinely who is the quickest of the bunch. 
But the line this time will be 10 laps to go. Final Flame does have the lead over Race Day. Uh, who has it over that of Palmer as well. Gotney Weave now is a four-second disadvantage to the back end of the top three here. It's a good-looking group down the pit straight now. Race Day is going to poke his head to the inside. Palmer might be in on this battle as well for third. Can he try to find a way around Final Flame without DRS? He's really in a bad position here, Flame, as Palmer trying it around the outside. Is he going to be able to get it? Not quite. Oh, he's clobbered the wall on the outside. Yeah, and I think maybe he'll kind of feel as if Final Flame squeezed him there. I don't really think that he did, but uh, you're not going to be getting, you're not going to be telling him that, that's for sure. Oh, Caesar heavy into the wall. I think Edwin's gone into the escape road. Yes, he has. Mercedes drivers making errors into turn one. Where have we seen that before? Cue the screams of David Coulthard. Coulthard? Coulthard? I don't know. Anyway, not the point. Point is six and a half tenths of a second now between Race Day and Final Flame. And oh, by the way, Palmer has actually fallen behind quite a lot here. 1.2. Uh, now the gap. Callie Robb within a half a second of Dusty Lusky as they make their way through Sector 2. I'll tell you what, I'm just wondering, unless there's another safety car... That's really, I, th I think another safety car here would definitely throw caution to the wind. I think race day could very well stay ahead of Final Flame here. Of course, it's eight and a half tenths of a second. Yeah, but still, you, you, you kind of have to wonder. Down the pit straight they go. Looking for potentially the outside Final Flame. Will he have it? No, he's going to choose the inside. That much we didn't expect. Final Flame back to the lead. The last time Final Flame won a league race here in Division 1 was back on May 16th. We raced at Imola. Fourteen races ago, nearly a full season since Final Flame last won a Grand Prix. Thinking about Palmer, the last time he won a race was back on August 15th at the Red Bull Ring. So we have a yellow flag and another full safety car. Chuck Blazin, I believe, is the culprit or somebody. Somebody's gone round big time here. That's once again brought out a safety car. It's got to have been a full wing be missing. Oh, it's the Mercedes of GSR Caesar. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. A safety car on track at this stage. That has blown this race wide open. This is a definite... I mean, this is a game-changing safety car here because now do we see drivers, you know, risk a pit stop, go back to the mediums, maybe even the softs if they think it's going to work enough. It's such an interesting decision, this. What do they decide to do as they make their way into the pit lane? Caesar has DNF, we believe, in the pit lane. I don't think it might be actually on track. Yeah, it must be. I think he's I think he's done that on track, hasn't he? Final Flame, Race Day, and Palmer all into the pit lane. What do they decide to do? We're thinking soft tires, yes. And a front wing change for Palmer. That's huge. We didn't see that initially. He'll be losing some spots there. Final Flame, soft. Race day, softs as well. Palmer to the softs. Reimer uh, in the pit lane as well. I believe maybe was that a front wing change for Reimer there. Not too sure. A lot of wings being changed. Tires being changed. Lancey onto the softs. Tell you what, we're going to see every compound of tire in use here.
So here's the scenario, right? We've got Final Flame, who hasn't won in 14 races, in the lead. We've got Race Day, currently back-to-back, -back, sorry, Netherlands, Monza, Miami, looking for his fourth win in a row. Not to mention fourth win in a row, but sixth of the season. We've got Palmer, who has won twice this season. Hungary, round two. And Austria, round six. We've got Edwin, who won a race this season. August 1st, Portugal, round four. We've got Gottney Weeb, currently sitting fifth. Who, if I look correctly, has never won a Division I race. Got Reimer, who won Monaco, the opener. The only uh, Division I race win to his name. Dusty Lusky, very talented veteran driver in his own right, has never won a Division I Grand Prix, I don't believe. Lancey Eighth, who I think does have a D1 race win somewhere along the line. Maybe I'm maybe maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong, yeah. Lancey, who, from looking at it, has never won a Division I race. Could this be his night? Not to mention A-Dub in the picture as well. Could this be his First Division One win as well, potentially. Kate Thomas, an 11th. When was the last time Kate Thomas won a round? The last time Kate Thomas won a Division One Grand Prix, if I read this collect correctly, was Canada of Season 7. Do the math on that, that's a lot of races, and oh, by the way... This is, this is obviously Baku, and anything can happen. Final Flame looking for his first Division I win in 14 races. Everybody else, race day, looking to go back to back to back to back. Four in a row in his sixth of the season. Championship implications in play as well. Mind you, we're already past halfway in the season. Every race, every point, every lap matters in this championship battle. We're assuming the safety car probably in this time by. We started with 19, we're down to 18. Look still once more at the tires. Edwin stays out, now up to fourth. Gottney, Weeb, and Reimer go to the mediums. Travis Scott on the mediums. Everybody else has gone soft. Final Flame will have the championship leader do his inside. Palmer behind. Edwin behind him. And Gottney Weeb behind him. Shaping up to be another fantastic Division 1 display. Oh! That's a slide for Edwin! Trying to warm up the tires. He's nearly binded on the straight. Thankfully, he's caught it. That car was full tilt. And we are back to green flag racing as they make their way towards the first corner. Race day will not challenge. Final flame on the way in. We got a lot of cars. Two by two going through the first corner. Reimer battling Gottney Weave now trying it around the outside. Going to have to break late. It'll be interesting to see if the softs will be quicker and for how long. Of course, they'll uh, you know have a couple of laps under safety car as well. You got to go five, six laps on a set of soft tires. Really only nowadays used for qualifying. Will these guys in the mediums, you know, kind of be uh, in the preferred position here towards the end of it? That is a big question. Final Flame leads race date for the time being. Reimer getting around Gottney Weeb side by side through five and six. Reimer heavy over the curb. Still side by side heading towards seven. Dead even wheel to wheel. Reimer still gets it. Makes the move. 
hopefully for now, and does. Up the hill through the castle they go. This is allowed a two and a half second gap back to Edwin. Edwin has actually fallen behind this battle by about a second and a half. The top three in and amongst a battle of their own. At the line this time will be five laps to go in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix here in Division One. Palmer trailing. Palmer not necessarily been on the back foot today. But he's not necessarily been in the attacking position as the two drivers ahead of him. Maybe has Palmer been sandbagging, flying under the radar as much as he could. That's definitely a possibility. Five laps to go. Race day going to try the outside in towards turn one. Palmer watches on and hopes for a clinical mistake from somebody. Callie Robb and Kate Thomas. Reimer and Gottney Weeb still. These two battling it out left and right and center. And Gottney Weeb getting to the inside of the Red Bull. And now Red Bull of race day to the inside of, of Final Flame. Palmer watches on, watching as they go side by side into turn three. Final Flame's going to have to switch to the left. Palmer has clobbered the inside wall. Still less than two tenths, three tenths of a second between the top two. Once DRS is coming into play, going down the pit straight, it's anyone's bet who comes out on, on top here. It could very well be back and forth between everybody on the final couple of laps. It has been a fantastic Grand Prix this so far, and we're not over yet. Reimer two and a half tenths of a second behind Agatni Weeb looking for the sixth position. GSR Edwin, by the way, plus 12. Lancey plus 11. Massive results for those two if they're able to hold on. Palmer behind the battle for the top two by about seven tenths of a second. He's on the outside looking in for the time being with four laps to go this time by. He's got to start thinking about pressuring, throwing caution to the wind, going balls to the wall for what it means to win a Division I Grand Prix and get back to race day in the standings. Down the pit straight once again, exiting turn 20, and there they go. Chuck Blazin and Travis Scott swapping positions now, going through turn 16 and 17. Down the pit straight, final flame with DRS. Does he try the outside? No, race day blocks the line. Four laps to go. Nikki 64 getting around A-Dub on the way into the first corner. We got three wide going on behind as Travis Scott, Chuck Blazin, and Gunner all battling there. I believe was that uh, Gottney Weeb probably got around Reimer again or vice versa. Final flame to the inside of race day and gets the spot. Fantastic stuff here. That's allowed Palmer back into the mix. Callie Robin, A-Dub once again side by side making their way through turn three. Kelly Robb gets his, gets his way ahead of, of uh, that of A-Dub. Sorry, back to back to back my ass. Uh, it was Kelly Robb who won last week, wasn't he? Yeah, Kelly Robb did win last week. I'm out of my mind, dude. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Let's rephrase this. Race Day looking to win his fourth out of the last five. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> Look at me go, not even knowing my statistics correctly. Spaceman, he deserved to slap me amongst the face for this. By the way, huge shout out to Spaceman. I don't, you know, you know what I mean? He has done so much work keeping league statistics. He's truly our man for that. It's a rather thankless job having to calculate and tabulate through all the time. And Spaceman's done an excellent job. Coming to the line now will be three laps to go here in the streets of Azerbaijan. Race day behind, four and a half, five tenths of a second in, is closing in on Final Flame, who's not closing in, is still that of Palmer. Thinking maybe does he have damage that we can't see. Dusty Lusky wanted to have a look to the inside of Edwin there, couldn't quite pull off the move. Reimer and Gottney Weed getting together again. Chuck Blazin back into the pit lane. Might be a DNF for the McLaren here. He's, he's made 90%, I believe. Reimer, two and a half tenths of a second. Lancey, two tenths behind. Got any weed. Still the midfield battles on. Final Flame leads them. Heading towards turn seven for the time being. Race day remains. 
not challenging Final Flame. Of course, not going to happen through this section of the track, let's be real. But the point is, is that if Final Flame is allowed an advantage, they'll absolutely take that and run with it. Remember the last time that Final Flame won a Division I Grand Prix was Imola, May 16th. And prior to that, by the way, his only Division I race win. Race Day looking for his fifth win of the season. Final Flame looking for the second win of his career. Down the pit straight yet again. Two laps to go in Baku. Race Day does even look this time, not quite. Palmer, by the way, don't let this slip your memory. 141.031, fastest lap of the session. Dusty Lusky goes round the right, Reimer goes round the left, and both guys overtake Edwin. Edwin may get Reimer back now around the outside. Reimer's gonna have to try to outbreak. Oh, into the in, into the Mercedes. And now Gotney Weeb pokes his head on the inside and gets around the Mercedes. Through turn four for the penultimate time, but it's Callie Robb getting down to the inside of Nikki 64 on the way through turn three. Will he be able to stay ahead? Nicky's still trying to poke his head low. Yes, it looks like Callie Robb's going to get that one, but it's Lancey and Edwin side by side going through 5-6. Well, I think Edwin may have hit the wall there on the outside. Callie Robb getting ahead of the Mercedes now. Through the castle for the penultimate time. Final Flame leads race day by 7 tenths of a second. Leading Palmer by six tenths. The top three relatively all by themselves. Reimer could get round Dusty Lusky and make his way to fourth. So we have a yellow flag and what could be a pile up back at the castle. Travis Scott's gone round. I think maybe well, it doesn't appear immediately that he's collected Gunner and Houdini, but it could have certainly been the case. Down the pit straight for the uh, for the penultimate time. Final lap of the Grand Prix about to be underway. Final Flame leads race day by half a second. Race day, you better believe, at least for the time being, is going to be conserving his energy store. Reimer getting around Dusty Lusky now up to fourth. Palmer 20% remaining. He's got to be careful here. He's got to rely on DRS for at least this section of the track. He can't be using his battery. Final Flame has saved up over 90%. He will be able to use his energy store defensively. Whereas Race Day, I mean, he'll have to use it in an attack, but he won't have nearly as much. Palmer behind as well, only in the 30s. Dusty Lusky and Gottney Weeb battling it out side by side. Weeb to the inside gets the spot. Into Sector 2 for the final time. Final Flame looking increasingly strong here. Making their way up through the castle once again for the final time now. Final Flame, six-tenth of a second advantage over race day. A-Dub's got a three-second time penalty for, multi, uh, for, for, cutting, for cu corner cutting. One of the only penalties brought on today. Half a second the gap. Palmer is now outside of even DRS range. The detection point has been moved up going through turn 20. So Palmer's got a little bit more time. But it's four and a half tenth of a second. Race day 2016. Half a second or less to the back end of Final Flame. Four tenths of a second. Exiting 18 and 19 for the final time. Race day. Will he be able to have enough? Final Flame trying to hold on. Final Flame, I think he will. He didn't start the fire, but the flame eternally burns. Final Flame, your winner in Baku. Race Day crashes into a million pieces across the line. Dusty Lusky getting around. Gotney Weeb will take fifth in a great Division I return. What a fantastic Grand Prix this has been. Final Flame, your winner today is first since May 16th, season 12 in Imola. And I believe only the second of his career. Fantastic, fantastic result for the Sauber. And be sure to join us next time out as well.
when we head to the Singapore Marina Bay Street Circuit in Singapore for what I believe is the ninth round of this Division One season. For Hot Spot, it's been a pleasure joining you once again. And we'll see you next time.